I am Mark Stewart with a second video about price gouging. And though it sounds so bad, so evil towards innocent consumers, it is actually a proper practice that helps consumers more than anything else. I'll pick a very notorious example. It's searing too, because it has to do with life and death medicines. Martin Shreckley was famous mid-decade for taking over a pharmaceutical company that had patents on something that he, because it was a monopoly, was able to raise the price of by 900%, okay? Drugs are, were suddenly almost 10 times as expensive, yet people paid for them. Whether they paid for them on their own or whether Medicare sought them out and paid for them, these were voluntary transactions. And these were transactions that at least some people underpaid for. They got a bargain. If a life and death medicine costs $2,000 per, say, one week dose, and you can afford to pay $4,000, you only paid $2,000. You just got a great deal. Now, it used to only cost 225 but so what? The people voluntarily paid to have medicine and in the absence of the ability to raise prices, those medicines might not get created in the first place. The politicians who want to stop price gouging are ones who are going to interfere with the development of important things in the first place. Now, important is not for me to decide and certainly not for the politician to decide. Important is decided by supply and demand. The marketplace determines what is important. And if an entrepreneur in the pharmaceutical industry can see that there's something that is underpriced and Yes, he can make more money from it, but more importantly, those goods go to the people that need it the most. They're not being squandered by somebody who really couldn't care less and it's so cheap, well, we'll hoard the stuff anyway. Now, here's the most important aspect. More important in a life and death thing than anywhere else, it's that prices signal where to produce more of. When others eyeing Martin Shreckley and the profits that he can bring down from a certain kind of treatment, they move to similar treatments. If it's patent protected, they can't do it right away, but they still look to similar other treatments that they can make use of. And with competition, the price for all of them eventually falls. But most importantly, people who need these medicines get it produced for them. This is the invisible hand at work that Adam Smith portrayed so vividly in 1776. And still, 200 and nearly 50 years later, our politicians don't realize what's at work. That pricing is a mechanism that invisibly lets Producers produce what people want. How good is that? And when politicians interfere, how bad is that? Not only for profits, but for the people who need it. That's the people I'm most concerned with. As for profits, politicians don't look out for the entrepreneur who makes an investment that sometimes loses. Okay, they're not insuring against an overpriced and under-demanded thing, so they really shouldn't be on the opposite end curtailing price rises that happen only because the demand for their product is there. Willing, able, free market transactions, they should not be interfered with. I'm Mark Stewart.